Today we're making overlapping pockets and I'm using tall book pages that I bought recently at a summer fair. Each of these has a cute little closure on the front so the front just tucks under so they flip open like that and like that and they have three pockets so there's a larger one that you could put a tag in in the middle and then two slightly smaller ones on the side so there's one here and there's also one here so I've just put a piece of snippet roll in there and some goodies in here I've collaged on them so I've also added a little pocket here and here so you can see there's some great little paper goodies in there and then I've decorated on the fronts of the two side pockets. I would use these in a junk journal so let's just take one of these and find a page. So this has got a bit of collage on the front and it's a sort of French vintage antique theme so I would find a page where it worked, maybe something like this. And because we're not collaging on the back, I would just put it flat on a page there. And then when you want to, you can take things out of it. You could journal here. You could take your tag out and do something there. So each of these overlapping pockets is made from a couple of tall book pages. And I found these at a summer fair in one of those binders that you look at, you love the paper, you think the pictures are great, you buy it, but you don't really know what to do with it. So I took this home and I just came up with this triple pocket overlapping design. They're really easy, there's no sewing required. They're quick and they use up these pages. And as I like to make things easy on my channel and I like to use basic supplies, I've put together again a usual page of process steps. You can take a screenshot of this, they're also on Pinterest, and they'll help us all make these overlapping pockets from tall book pages. So the first thing we're going to do is make the basic pocket structure. So the three compartments with the big one in the middle just here, and then a couple on the side, so a flat pocket there, and one attached with a flap here. These are just a little bit narrower than the big one here. And for that we need to tear these down as equally as possible. So the pages that I've got, and yours don't need to be exactly the same size, but mine are about 19 centimetres wide by 28 and a half centimetres. So that is about seven and a half inches by 11 and a quarter. I'm literally going to fold them in half and tear them in half. So nothing too difficult about that. And I actually prefer the torn edge of a bone folder. Make life easy with a bit of a crease. And tear number one. And by starting with a tall page, it means that by halving it, we get pieces that are pretty much identical. It's also very satisfying to use up really beautiful book pages like this or binder pages. Even though they've got little holes on the edge, that doesn't matter, we're going to work around that. So, half the second one. And as I said, for each of the pockets, we need three of these elements. I'll just choose any three. Set that one aside for the next one. And we'll begin by making the large pocket in the middle, which is just a really basic pocket. I've done it lots of times. The key to this particular design is to retain as much width as possible when you're making this pocket. So we're going to fold up one side like that to make a nice crisp edge and then take the other side and just fold that over. And this little flap just gives us something to glue. So I'll just take that over. I've given myself for this large pocket in the middle, probably about a centimeter of little flap here that I'll use for gluing. And I also just need to fold up across the bottom about the same amount. And we don't need to measure when we're making these pockets, 
when I glue them together, I do it in a way that helps them line up as best possible. So I'll show you how to do that. So that's the basic middle pocket fold done. I just make life a bit tidy, try a different pair of scissors, make things easy for when we come to just seal this by taking off a little bit of an edge down there. We need a small piece of pie out of the middle, just a tiny bit, and then we need to just go around just beyond the, the rectangle that we've created from our folding. That's what we need to do across the bottom. And for tidy sake, I'm going to take just a tiny bit off the corner here. That means it won't peep out when we come to do the gluing, which we can do now. And my formula is look for your vertical and find the flap that's furthest away from it. I don't cut it off. I glue that down. It just gives me just a bit more robustness. And I, with my glue stick again, so I'm using a glue stick rather than liquid glue, I put a tiny bit just at the base of my vertical flap. Use that to attach the second horizontal fold. And then I'm going to put glue down here and across here. So these pockets are unbelievably easy and they're very satisfying when we get to the decoration stage. Just fold that over. And you can choose which front you have, which back. There's green on both, which I really like. Make it nice and crisp. And that is job done on the central pocket. So we're already on step three, making the two pockets with one hinge flap on each of them. One hinge on this one and one hinge in, on this one. And fairly obviously the hinges are going to be on different sides. So I'll start with making a hinge and I'm being quite generous with the width of the hinge. And the reason for that is when we come to put a little closure on, we need enough difference between the width of these side pockets and the total width of this big middle one to allow us to position this little circular closure and for that to work. So don't be too frugal on giving yourself a bit of a flap or a hinge for attaching to the middle pocket. And then I'll make a pocket out of the remaining piece of paper. So we'll do the usual, give ourselves a vertical flap, fold this into the crease that we've made where that hinge was, flatten that, open it up and then give yourself a flap at the bottom. I'm trying to be neat, it's not, not perfect, it's never perfect is it? Right, and I can tell that this is my hinge because it's bigger than the vertical that I've created for my pocket. So I'm going to take my scissors and snip a bit out from all the way along the bottom in the same way. So where we've got a rectangle at the corner, snip that out and go slightly beyond it. Work your way along. There's a crease here, so I'll take a tiny piece of pie from around it. And I've got a rectangle here, slightly different shape because of that larger flap take that out and then again along the top just take a tiny bit off the corners and this means that when we come to fold and glue we haven't got bits sticking out. So I've got the basics of a pocket which has obviously got a flap here so that would be this side. Let me just seal that up so we'll do the same formula Here's the vertical fold for my pocket, so I'll go as far away as possible and glue down the flap along the bottom. Then I need to put a bit of glue at the base of my vertical fold just to hold that. And then I'm going to glue this together and you can see 
the reason I took a bit off the top is that when we fold this in, this doesn't jut out above the top, which is just one of those little details. If you want to do it, it just helps a little bit. It means you get nice clean edges when you come to fold things over. Because when we fold, we don't always get perfect alignment and that just helps. So that's a pocket with a flap at the right. So I just need to make one with a flap on the left hand side. And I want this colourful stuff to be on the outside, so I'm going to do it this way. So I'll make a nice big flap. So that's probably about a centimetre and a half for my flap. And I'll give myself a vertical for the pocket itself. Go to about there. And then we need to fold up. So let's give ourselves a bit of pocket flap at the bottom. And of course, we need to fold in to the crease of the hinge. It's there. I've done it in a slightly different order there, but it all meets at the same point at the end. So those are my folds. Let's do the snipping. Probably easier to see with the colour on this side. So if I've got a rectangle, I take that out, plus a little bit more. As I work my way along, I take out the tiniest piece of pie around that fold. I've got to an end, I've got another rectangle. Take that out, plus a tiny bit more. And along the top, we just take a little bit of, just a gradient off the corner, just a little bit, and then we can seal it up. So my wider one is my hinge, so I need to glue down my pocket flaps. So I'll glue down the one that's furthest away from the vertical. Hold that down, a little bit of glue at the bottom. Fold up the lower flap. And then I need glue along here and along here. I can just fold that over. We're going to do a bit of decorating, so we'll probably lose some of the text and the images, but it's nice to start with the side that you prefer when you're using book pages. So what have we got? We've got the pocket that goes in the middle. I've got one for the left-hand side, one for the right-hand side. So I can just take my glue and glue them together. So I just need a bit of glue on each of the flaps to attach them to the main pocket. Try and go all the way to the edge. And they may not be absolutely 100% the same height. So what I like to do is align them at the base. So I'll tuck the centre pocket into that flap and then just do my best to eyeball them being lined up here. So if there's going to be any difference, and we did fold in half, which makes life easy in the first place, they may not be absolutely perfectly the same height. To me, I'd rather have them lined up at the bottom, so that's what I look for. But we're doing pretty well on that one, that's not too bad. And you'll find that if you fold it in and open it up, you'll end up with a tiny bit of a gap here, which is absolutely fine. It just makes it a bit easier for when you want to put things in it and fold that over. So let's do another one. Glue on here, line up the bottom here with the bottom here. Just get that there, tuck it in, fold it over. And when you open it up, you'll just end up with a tiny bit more of a gap here. And I think that's absolutely fine. But we've got our structure now that we can decorate and we can add lots of goodies to, goodies to when we're finished. The next thing we're going to do is add a closure. And you can have your closure on the left, like I've got on here. That just opens out like that. Or you could have it on the right and have your left-hand side pocket just tucking under like that. It doesn't really matter. You can have the circle jutting out a bit if you want to. 
or if you wanted to you could trim it off so on this one I just thought I would trim it off with a pair of scissors and have that completely flush but what we do need to do is gather our elements for making the closure and we need two circles one being the closure surface that we see and another identical circle that's going to tuck behind. So this is just a thick piece of paper or a thin piece of cardstock. Don't make it too thick because it will be too bumpy behind our piece of paper that we're going to decorate with. But you do need this circle to be identical in size to the closure that we're using. And while we're at it, let's put our hole in the centre of our closure and again to get the holes in exactly the same place put your circles on top of each other and hold them firmly by eye I'm just going to find the centre being very careful not to stab myself with my pointy sharp awl and I'm just going to get that through I don't want too big a hole there we go so I've got two circles with holes in identical places and I've got a piece of paper that I'm going to use for my just decorative element like this. So let's have it. I really like that. I don't know if I can preserve that. Why don't we have, let's have that way. I'm going to have the right one sitting on top. So I know that this piece of paper is going to sit on here. And this is going to be somewhere on here but I will line up to know exactly where it needs to be by folding this over and I can see that I just need to move it in a bit to have that in exactly the right place. I'll take a pencil and just make a mark on the piece of paper behind. I know that this piece of paper, my decorative paper, is going to sit flush along here so I know where that's going to go. So what I will do is take my awl again, just make a tiny little, tiny little hole. And then I just need a cute little brad. I think a small one's probably good for this. And the brad can go through the hole of the top closure, through the hole that we made in the right place in the piece of paper. And then I've got my little protective element to make this a little bit stronger to go through on the back and if I splay out those legs everything looks perfect. There we go, just flatten that down and what I know I've got is a closure that will be in the right place if I glue that down which is what I'm going to do now. How magic is that? So glue all the way to the edge and plenty of it because we've got a little bit of a bump here which is a little bit of resistance. So we need glue all over this piece. And I'm going to put that with the left hand edge just flush with my pocket. And that means I should have, if everything has worked, something that will tuck under beautifully. That really is the hard work done. What we can do now is have a play by decorating all of the rest of this. And for step six, which is all about the remaining decoration, so that's the front of the various flaps and the inside of those pockets, I have put together a few samples just to give you a few ideas. Obviously use whatever you have, whatever you want. You can add whatever you like and just get immersed in the beauty of all of these lovely papers. So on this one, I've added some vintage French ephemera paper and I've stamped and painted. So I'll show you how I do that. On the inside, I added an extra little pocket here and an extra little pocket here and I literally just glued them in. So I'll have a go at some of those. And I had a, a very simple just a label on the right hand side here. You could add a space for journaling if you wanted. So I've kept that to a bit of a vintage theme. And on this one, I used a scrappy bit of old scrapbook paper. I think that's K&Co, but I really love the colour. And a gorgeous 
a, a label here in beautiful colours. So the, the brown and the teal, I think, just really go. Maybe a slightly contrasting modern closure on this one. Again, I've got a little pocket here, and this is a pocket too. So enough space to put some lovely little things in. And in each of them, I've been adding one of my tags. These are the tags that are made a couple of weeks ago in a video and they just fit perfectly. So there's, there's enough width from the book page that we used to make this pocket wide enough to really put some nice things in. So why don't we have a go at, oh, there's another one. Why don't we have a go at just decorating and see where we get to. I've got a couple of tips for just making life a little bit easy and for making these more robust. So we'll try to remember to share those as we go. So this is the one we've got. I'll start with something on here and naturally I've got some lovely greens up here and the bottom half is text and vanilla. So I've just pulled a few papers out. I thought I'd make maybe a little pocket out of something down here. That's a quite a nice thick piece of paper. I'll just tear one of those off. I don't make this into a pocket with flaps, I just literally stick it down with glue. But I've been using my washi tape just to make the sides a little bit more robust. I'll show you what I mean. So I get glue just around three sides of this one. It gives you enough capacity to put a few items in and I don't think we want this to be incredibly spacious as an inner pocket. We're not going to put too many things in or the whole thing would be just too thick. So maybe put that there and then I need to find my washi. So I'd take one of my, maybe one of my thin washes or you could halve a piece if you've just got thicker ones. I'd just give the sides a little bit more strength because if it's going to come away when you're putting things in, that's where it's going to happen. Let me show you. So I've just added a little bit here and a little bit here and that means we can tuck things in there. Let's see what else we've done on the prototypes. So something on the left hand side here, maybe a different shape. What have we got in our pile of papers? I'm afraid I'm going to cover up the very pretty house. Again, I'll do a bit of glue on three sides. Oops, you could collage over the whole of the inner. You don't need to make it into pockets if you don't want. I just felt like it. And again, I think I'll strengthen the sides by putting some narrow washi on there. It's quite see-through this washi, so Although I've got pattern in the paper behind, which is really nice, I'm not completely losing it. Make sure that's really well pressed down. Maybe I'll have a bit of the modern coming into it. It doesn't go amiss. I think this works well because I've got black over here. Maybe not so much. Just a bit there. On the right hand side, shall we find a label? We've got something medium sized. That'll work there. I think a journaling spot here would work well as, as well if you had maybe a plain piece of scrapbook paper. Comes together quite quickly. And just on the inside, I am going to do a tiny bit of stamping. I am mildly obsessed with a ladybird, which I believe is a ladybug. Is that right? Ladybug, she can go on there. I'll show you the set that this comes from in a minute. It's a really nice collection I've just got my hands on. And then on, on the front, I need something to go on here. So I thought I'd carry on with the vintage theme. How would that one work? I'm going to lose my house again. Tear that down and I'll glue that down completely. I'm not going to make this into another pocket. I think that would just be a bit excessive. I 
and now I think I need some extras on here. What should we have? Oh, actually, I've got I've got a stamped leaf. Quite like that. Let's give the edges a bit of tattiness. Go on there, and I'm just going to limit some of those edges with a bit more washi just to take the raw straight edge feel away. A bit more of that. Glue that down properly. I'm going to do a tiny bit of stamping on here. So on these various fronts you can see I've just got a little bit of foliage and although I maybe could have a go at drawing those sometimes I don't want to and I want something that's a bit quicker so I actually found this stamp isn't that gorgeous and this is a stationary pal stamp as is the little ladybug and the set that it comes from here's the rest of it so in this set you can see where I took the foliage from I've got some more really useful foliage here, some flowers, I could paint those in purples, I think that's that's really exciting. I've got another bug up here, I've got a bee, another leaf, an iris and some more foliage. So this is a set from Stationery Pal, they did actually kindly send me this along with a few others, I'm going to be playing with quite a few. This is another one that I thought would be really useful, so this is all about postage, so you can see the various stamps, the wiggly lines, the circles. I really like that one. I've got one with space for little notes or titles to put on journaling pages or the front of a cover. I've got a selection of butterflies here. Nice variety in decent sizes. I quite like this one. I would look forward to painting some of these. And on this one, I'm, I like it because I get crisp lines. There's no point having stamps if they don't do what you want them to do. I like them to just stamp off the page a bit so that it looks like the page is, you know, it's quite active and busy because the leaves are cutting just over. I'm using my gorgeous set of Faber-Castell paints. I'm organised enough today to have some water and there's nothing more peaceful than a bit of watercolour painting in beautiful vintage colours. So I'm going for the orangey sage colours and mixing them up a bit and I really like putting my own sort of personal touch onto digitals so that they feel just a bit more special and a bit more personalised. I don't know if you do painting or writing on digital papers. I think for these pockets, it just brings something out. I like to put quite a few different shades of green because that's what plants are like, isn't it? They're never just one shade. So he goes like that. And I grab a tiny bit of red and I just go over the top so I can still see the black spots through the paint so I don't have to be particularly neat and it's just a cheeky bit of red which I always think is quite nice in a project. The last thing I want to do, apart from filling it, is add a little bit of robustness to the side and this is my tip to make these little pockets just be a bit more long living because we're pushing this under the closure and what I do is take a bit of washi and run it down the side and I do have something exciting to share let me just clear my desk and show you so this morning I received a lovely little parcel from none other than the world famous Amity Bloom and she sent me a lovely little note I knew it was coming so she has launched some beautiful washi tape and I thought this was a great chance to just put it to the test. So there's a lovely note here from Nazi and this is the washi tape. It's pink, it's amity and it's beautiful. I've been so excited waiting for this. So Nazi, you've done an amazing job. 
shall we just open one of these and I'll put it along the border here just to complement the green and protect the border of our pocket. That's quite a bright one. Let's show you. I've got quite a bright one here. Strong coral. That's really nice. That's got some flowers in it and it's a bit more muted. And then this one is wider. And I know that what she's done is create, I think there's like 17 or 18 different washi tapes and she's sharing them around with her friends and I'm honoured to have been sent some. I think I'll go for this middle one, middle size. Oh, that opens up quite easily. So it's a washi with sticky directly on the back rather than a peel off. So some of the ones I use like this, you peel off there. So this is one with sticky directly on the back. I'm going to take a piece of that and it's quite wide. I'm going to halve it because I like the jagged edge and I'm just going to put that along here. I don't use pink a lot so it's good to introduce new colours into the projects that we have. Picket fence. So you can mix and match maybe a special strong colour with something a bit different. Black and white goes with a lot. That's just strengthened that up a bit. I really like that, that flash of pink. So this is the Amity washi tape. They are in her Etsy shop, so do check them out. I know it's an exciting launch for her and I really wish her well. Let's just add a few of our elements to fill the pockets. So maybe one of the tags that I made the other day. That works beautifully, the blue and the blue. Give this as a gift, how lovely that would be. Could put some snippet in one of the tall pockets. Overlapping pockets from tall book pages. Check out my video where I make those tags that go inside these pockets. I think you'd really enjoy making those, the collage on them and putting them together. I hope to see you soon.